Welcome back to Hila Live. Now, convicted sex trafficker and child rapist Gerhard Ackerman has been handed 12 life sentences for crimes related to sex abuse ring he ran in Johannesburg. Ackerman appeared in the Gauteng High Court where Judge Mohammed Ismail sentenced him to more than 700 charges he had been found guilty of. Now, does this ruling set the precedent for more offenders like Ackerman to face harsher punishment for these crimes? Joining us now to discuss this from the Teddy Bear Clinic, I'd like to welcome Shahida Umar. Shahida, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Jazakallah so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Shukran Dalilan. No, no, it's an absolute pleasure. Okay, Shahida, let's start off, of course, with the sentencing. It was justice, wasn't it? That when you look at the charges that were read out by Judge Ismail, that this had to happen and that these uh, convictions had served the purpose of what this man had done. Indeed, I think this has been a major victory for South Africa, and we need to applaud and loud the uh, justice system, particularly Judge Ismail Mohammed. I think he went with such rigor, with such sensitivity, with such objectivity, and dealt with the matter serving justice, serving the best interests of the children. And this has been a strong, strong message to all other potential offenders, sexual predators out there, because you mentioned that the setting of a precedent, mm -hmm. yes, certainly this could be a huge opportunity for magistrates, judges, any presiding officer in the future to follow a firm decision where sexual offenders, perpetrators, your pedophilias, the pedoph uh, you know, pervasive pedophilic uh, disorders will not be tolerated, that there will be zero tolerance for this kind of conduct sending a message also to victims and their families that justice is not denied, that justice is being served. And certainly for many of the children and their families, this would be an opportunity to get closure. Yes, we cannot say that their wounds will be healed and that they you know, would move on in their lives. However, they would see that justice has been on their side and has served them in their best interests. Yeah, Shaira, I want to talk about the victims because, I mean, it's the victims at the end of the day that can work out, walk out of this and really look at this with a sense of relief, but also a sense that justice has finally been served. I mean, within your organization, you've dealt with so many kids who have been abused, come from homes who have suffered abuse like at the hands of uh, uh, people like Gerard Eckerman. So the victims, I mean, it's such a relief for them, isn't it, that they can finally look at this and say, there is some hope in our judiciary and there is some hope that these uh, uh, offenders can finally face the might of the law. So Faraz, you raise such an important mm. point because often victims don't come forward to not make a disclosure, are afraid to make a statement or reach out to law enforcement or even go through the criminal justice system uh, because they feel that they will not be believed, because they feel that they will be blamed and they would you know, feel uh, a sense of stigma, humiliation, shame, ridicule, to so suffer at the responses that are elicited by the public. And I think this ruling, this decision certainly has validated the allegations, the disclosures, the claims made by victims and their families. So this has certainly set a precedent that other victims realize that they can come forward, that their the expressions of uh, abuse will be addressed and attended to in the right way, as has this case certainly demonstrated. And I think the judge was so scathing, was so firm, and that is what we need to applaud. And that is what we need to appeal to all other judges, to the justice system, that they need to address victims and their pain and trauma. Because you raise something that whilst the physical wounds disappear, the emotional and psychological wounds remain. The scarring is there for a lifetime. It's about you know, learning to cope and deal with 
the issues and the challenges, the pain and the trauma and moving on. So one cannot put a timeline or a time frame to the healing. It could be a lifelong process. It impacts on the trajectory in terms of the behaviors, in terms of uh, you know healing with regard to uh, personality disorders, self harm, uh, you know the the depression, attempted attempted suicide. Like you say, we deal with this on a daily mm. basis, and this is some of the manifestations that we see in the journey to healing, where many victims go through this challenges have to deal with the trauma and of course dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder the hypervigilance the hyper arousal uh, and you know uh, avoidance of individuals or settings and plagued with uh, 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 images or there's many triggers that would certainly create situations where they would feel you know they get into the state of dysregulation it's flight fright or freeze and i think these are things that victims have to face with and that the world out there is not exposed to the harshness the painful realities of victims and their journey shader 12 life sentences i mean that's quite harsh i mean but it also it's sending a message to uh, uh perpetrators like Gerard Ackerman or future perpetrators, anyone who wants to commit this heinous act. Uh, the judiciary, I mean, for somebody like yourself, who of course works amongst children and, and sees the pain and trauma that they go through, whether they come from abusive families or anywhere else. I mean, there's hope in the judiciary, isn't it? That this sentencing of Gerard Ackerman is a strong message to any one of those who want to commit something like this. And if they are found guilty, face the might of the law. Indeed, I think this, as I say, it's groundbreaking. Mm. It's a major victory for South Africa, for victims, and certainly a strong message for potential perpetrators out there that abuse will not be tolerated, that justice can be served and certainly promote the best interest and well-being of children. Shada, of course, the world that we live in, I mean, anything can happen in terms of the sentencing of Gerard Ackerman won't stop there from being future perpetrators. It's just the way the world is. And it's sometimes the, the sick circle that we find ourselves, not only in South Africa, but across the world. I mean, organizations like yourself and us as citizens, I mean, what ro active role do we need to play in order to make sure that our children here within South Africa are protected against... Uh, sick individuals like Ackerman or those who want to commit the very same crime that Ackerman had committed? So very important for us because I think as a society, we have a huge responsibility towards our children. You know, we, we, this issue around child protection, it's not my business, it's mm -hmm. not your business, it's our business. And I think that's the attitude and that one needs to adopt to go back and rekindle the spirit of Ubuntu where your child mm. is my child. So firstly, that that's the kind of approach. And also secondly, to report anything that one sees, you know, that you, you don't feel, one doesn't feel comfortable about. So any idea, suspicion, inkling, or even if there's some doubt, one has to report it. According to the Children's Act, Section 110 speaks of legal obligation to report provided it's acted in good faith so rather err on the side of caution the rule of thumb is report report to the authorities like law enforcement your family violence child protection and sexual offenses unit any designated child protection organization but the important thing is to report and to look out for children because it's an implicit expectation that we as adults should be looking out for children and ensuring their safety and protection. What I also want to alert the public to, that this ruling, this judgment, proves that Gerard Ackerman mm. is still so arrogant. He's mm. has, he has displayed and demonstrated the typical characteristics of a pedophile, a sexual predator, where he is denying uh, and he professes to be innocent, the cognitive distortions of denial of impact, denial of awareness, denial of responsibility, where he says that the children were uh, uh, 16 and above. 
and he's still, you know, expecting uh, what well, he's going to submit a motion for a retrial. And that alone, uh, you know, expresses that he is not showing any remorse. He's not acknowledging responsibility. There is no regret. So this kind of ruling is important for all potential perpetrators out there that this will not be tolerated, regardless of the cognitive distortions that are demonstrated and expressed. Shreda, Jazakla so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Shukran Dalilan. That's uh, Shahida Umar from the Teddy Bear Clinic, of course, talking to us about how w the ruling yesterday of Gerard Ackerman and the charges that, of course, he now has been found guilty, uh, the 12 life sentences he has to face, that precedence has to be set for anyone who wants to commit a hideous crime that this man has committed. After the break, I'll have your latest news. Do stay tuned to Hilal Live.